Hi, I'm James Catherall, founder of Catherall Audio. By the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a full explanation of why you should be using MainStage. And I feel confident that if you're a musician and you're not already using it, you'll wanna at least check it out. Let's start with a quick backstory on MainStage and how it came to be. It starts with Logic Pro, which was released in 1993 and acquired by Apple in 2002. As Logic Pro grew in popularity, people were trying to use it during live performances, which wasn't the best or easiest experience. You had to get deep in the inner workings of Logic by using the environment to route the MIDI to different keyboards and allow it to be usable in a live set. So in comes MainStage which was Apple's solution to artists' desire to use their software instruments in a live setting. Most famously, they worked with Trent Reznor and the Nine Inch Nails in around 2008 as part of their initial testing. Since then, MainStage has grown in popularity. Nowadays, you'll most often see it being used in worship bands, musical theater, which you can see in behind the scenes videos of Hamilton like this one. There was also a great channel run by Brian Lee, which I think at this point has been deleted because I can't find it anymore when I look for it. He did a lot of musical theater programming and had some great content that went into the nuts and bolts of how he programmed concerts. Finally, MainStage is used very often in the marching arts, which are things like high school marching bands, drum corps, and indoor drum lines. By this point, you're probably wondering what makes MainStage so special and why should you use it? Let's try to demonstrate it through some scenarios. Let's say you own Omnisphere, Keyscape, Ivory 2, and a bunch of other contact libraries and you wanna use all of them during a performance. You could use all of these in their standalone modes on your laptop, but that would take a lot of complicated MIDI routing to make sure that you can switch between the different sounds Sounds and they don't end up playing simultaneously. Or you'll need to do a bunch of muting and unmuting to get it all to work correctly. Or you can load all of those into your main stage concert and through the use of patches and MIDI assignments in layout mode, you can create custom sounds that are specific for each of your songs and quickly cycle through your patches to instantly be ready for the next one in the set. So now it's way more convenient because it's all contained within one program. Now, I've heard main stage referred to as a DAW, but I don't think that's quite correct because MainStage lacks one key component that all DAWs have, and that's a timeline. MainStage doesn't have a timeline in which you can sequence MIDI notes and audio files. The more accurate category for MainStage is a VST host, which, described in simpler terms, is a single program where you can place all of your software instruments and effects to be used in a performance. So essentially it's like a container, where normally you'd have all of your different software instruments all spread out in their different standalone modes but you can put all of them in MainStage so they can be used in one simple program. But let's move on to what makes MainStage truly great. In the previous scenario, I talked about using Omnisphere and Keyscape and all of these other expensive software instruments. And a lot of you probably said, well, I don't have any of those things, so I guess that means I don't have any use for MainStage. And that's where you're wrong. For the low price of $30, you get access to Apple's full library of software instruments and effects which if you aren't familiar with, it includes basically anything you need. Six different synthesizers, a retro synth, a vocoder, a sampler, a drum machine, alchemy, which is very similar to Omnisphere, a complex modeling synth, it has emulators that can recreate the sounds of a B3 Hammond organ, a clavinet, an electric piano, and the Mellotron, as well as a playback plugin so you can play backing tracks during your performance. And that's just the software instruments. For effects, it has a guitar amp and pedal emulator, five different delays, six different distortion plugins, a whole bunch of different kinds of compressors, including your straight up compressor with different emulations of classic hardware compressors, a limiter, a noise gate, a multiband compressor, a transient shaper, and a de-esser, five different EQs, including really great emulations of the classic Neve and Poltec hardware EQs, four different reverb plugins, all different kinds of modulation plugins like phasers, flangers, chorus, ring modulators, tremolos, and more, and pitch correction and pitch shifting plugins, and the list goes on so much longer. And I'll say it again because it's such an amazing deal. All of this comes in the $30 price tag. There aren't any extra DLCs or in-app purchases. You pay the initial $30 and you get all of it. If any one of those plugins were sold individually online, they would cost anywhere from $25 to $500. This allows you to get started right away as a beginner in the world of music production and software instruments. Now, enough about the price. Let's talk about some of the other great features of MainStage. Here's another scenario. 
Let's say you have a hardware keyboard that you really love performing with, like a Yamaha Montage or Nord Stage keyboard. You know all of its ins and outs and are really familiar with all of its sounds. But you also want to start diving into Main Stage and see what it has to offer. Do you have to choose between the hardware keyboard and Main Stage? No, you can use both. Main Stage has a special channel strip called an external MIDI channel strip, where you can set up a hardware keyboard and plug the outputs of it into your audio interface, and you can use the sounds from your hardware keyboard anywhere you want in your concert. It can be on its own, or you can stack it simultaneously with software instruments inside of Main Stage. You can even use Main Stage to send program and bank changes to your hardware keyboard. So this way you don't have to choose between Main Stage or hardware gear, you can just use both. Now, while we're discussing the use of hardware keyboards inside of main stage. You can also use it to run things like guitars and vocals. You'll need an audio interface like a Focusrite Scarlett. Then you can plug your guitar or microphone into it and use the audio channel strips to run those through main stage and add any type of processing and effects you want like the guitar amp emulators or the guitar pedal boards. Or for your vocals you can use the EQs, delays, compressors, and reverbs. So now you can develop your own unique sounds without the need for expensive pedals or outboard gear. Now Let's move on to the use cases for the marching arts. The choice to use main stage or hardware keyboards and samplers is still a pretty hotly debated issue, but I think it's hard to deny the popularity of main stage in the activity. Using main stage allows you to ditch the expensive Yamaha Montage and SB404 sampler and replace it with a MacBook Pro and a MIDI controller, especially if you want two synth players. If you're using hardware gear, you need to buy another hardware keyboard and potentially another SB404 as well. But if you use main stage, you only need to spend another hundred dollars for a MIDI controller and a USB cable, and then you're good to go. Now, you may hear the word Apple and get worried that you'll have to drop a bunch of money on the computer, but technology today has far surpassed the needs of audio and music. 95% of groups would be completely fine with a base level MacBook Pro from within the last five years, and you can find a refurbished one at a really affordable price on websites like Backmarket, Mac of All Trades, or Mac Sales. Mainstage also makes it much easier to program concerts because you can hire someone to create all of it remotely. Then they upload it to Dropbox and you can have it ready to go on your computer in a matter of minutes. The only things you need to know how to do is assign the hardware and layout mode, which you can learn about in our previous video here, and then you're done. It would also probably be good to have them be on call for any potential troubleshooting you'll need during rehearsals, and pay them accordingly, of course. But you don't need to worry about all the knobs and buttons or hiring someone to come out in person to program all of your gear. Now, to tackle the last fear that people usually have, which is the instability of laptops and software, which is totally valid, I usually suggest that you should have a computer that is solely dedicated to use for main stage and nothing else. And that computer should never be updated in any way, shape or form. This allows it to be as stable as possible. In the world of audio, updating software can be really risky. New versions can introduce bugs and instability as well as completely break third-party software that you are using. Nowadays, we also have great gear that can allow for redundancy. The best one in my opinion is the Play Audio 12 by iConnectivity. This audio interface allows you to hook up two computers that will run simultaneously and will automatically and instantly switch between the two computers anytime it detects a problem and you won't even notice it happens. This can provide a lot of peace of mind when using computers in a live setting. And if you want to learn a bit more about that, you can check out our previous video here. So with all of the things I've covered, it's a no brainer that main stage is a fantastic option for live performance. In my opinion, it's the best option for any live keyboard players in the music world, which probably explains why it's so popular with keyboardists in worship bands, musical theater, and the marching arts. If you want to learn more about the details of the program, I highly suggest you check out the playlist we've created. At the time of recording this video, we currently have 24 videos that cover a wide range of topics about main stage. You can check that out right here or by clicking the link in the description. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, I would really appreciate it if you gave the video a like and also click that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one.